Okay, so we started Rapa Nui a couple of years ago, um, and we, we set up with, with a couple of hundred pound each, and um, bought a box of t-shirts, sold it to mates and stuff like that, and uh, it's naturally evolved. Obviously, we've had to kind of put all the money back in to grow the company, and now we're in a, in a place where we've got uh, five people working for us. We're going to have another two soon, so. <coughs> yeah. so, so. So why the company, and what was the motivator for it? It was when Mark first started his, his degree um, in renewable energy engineering, and so he was learning a lot about climate, telling me, and I, I was like, oh, this is bad. But it was, it's always been quite good because I kind of, I'm like the, the general public, do you know what I mean? And Mark, the stuff that Mark's been, was passing on, was uh, like, he was able to explain it to me, and then I can sort of translate, around, like, it. translate it into kind of more layman's terms, I guess. But yeah, so Martin tends to is quite creative, and then I sort of turn things into a business, really, because my like my so. I, I did a business degree, so um, we've both been quite entrepreneurial since we like we we're pretty young, and always having ideas for businesses and stuff like that. Um, like Mark's always been kind of quite good at like sounds a bit weird, but knowing like what's cool, he'd always like draw little pictures or like make his own T-shirts or make it hats or whatever, and I'll be like, oh, you're saying I'm cool. <laughs> I'd say I'd say you're good at drawing cool stuff. I am cool. And so, so, uh, <laughs> so that sort of things I think probably comes natural, naturally. But like the other, the other stuff has just been like I know from experience of having all the stuff that I've had to learn, and also watching Mark learn what he's learned. Like he's taught taught himself how to build amazing websites, and all of the the stuff that I kind of think kind of naturally leads off your degree. Like, but it just comes down to hard work. Yeah, that's all it is. I, I'd say that that like I've got an engineering degree. And that's got absolutely nothing to do with fashion. But our aim is to change the way that the fashion industry works because textiles is, everyone knows why textiles is like quite a bad, a bad industry. There's a lot of bad things going on there. I mean, you only have to look at like blood, sweat and t-shirts, Primark and all that kind of stuff to everyone knows a bit about it. But the reason why fashion, it wasn't intentional, but the reason why fashion is so relevant to sustainability and design, and design is so relevant to sustainability, is that like, it's like no other medium uh, with say like cars and other consumer goods you buy them and it's kind of like that you know oh i'm a bit of a mercedes you kind of apply it to your life but fashion's like no other medium that you actually drape yourself in what you believe in um there's no other medium like it and if you look into it and do do, do the research 80 percent of the environmental carbon and toxicity impact of clothing happens post-purchase after you've bought the clothes when you're washing it and stuff like that and um the idea behind Rapa Nui is that if we can sort of inform and educate people as to where people's clothing comes from and how it's made, and people and turn sort of eco design into trend, we can influence wider lifestyle choices that actually affect that. Rather than the twenty percent, which is about using organic cotton, using renewable energy powered factories, or fair trade, it's affecting that eighty percent. So fashion is the probably one of has the greatest potential to be the medium that brings about sustainable change through the, its unique power of influence, basically. And how have you gone about actually getting that message out there? Um, the uh, way we do that is through what we basically sort of was coined as, sort of, I suppose, ethical marketing, isn't it? Mm. So we're, uh, like I said, it's about trying to educate people as to where clothing comes from and how it's made. It's about communication and dialogue between the, mm. the company, the designer, and the the consumer, and um, we try and instead of just feeding people like an eco sticker on a box and trying to get greater sales, it's more about um, trying to sort of open up a two way conversation. Uh, the way we do that is by on our website we've got like loads of information, like a Wikipedia about anything you ever want to know about our products. Um, yeah, and you know, it's it's literally bottomless pictures, uh, video, text quotes, facts, figures, and it's two ways so people can ask questions to get answers from us. And that's like at the bottom end, which is a load of information. And then we try and package that into a supply chain diagram and we're the first people to do it. So it's a 3D interactive map of the woman putting the seed in the ground right through to it getting on the ship, coming out of London, coming in the other way. Videos, pictures across the whole supply chain. And uh, that's kind of like the, you know, the way that people can see where their stuff comes from, but to shop quickly with a conscience, what we've tried to do is develop the eco-labelling initiative, which is just like uh, energy-efficient lights, 
so people can shop quickly with a conscience and have, get their little A grade next to the, to the product. So we're trying to sort of package that information at the top, shopping quickly with a conscience, eco-labeling. You can find out where it comes from and how it's made and if you're really into it there's an endless wealth of information for you to go in there and read up on if you want to. So the response has been positive. People, I think a lot of people have, you know, it, it just goes to show like, you know, we're two guys, 23, 25, when we started it, like I was 19 and we're coming up with like initiatives and actually doing them with 200 quid. So what are all these other businesses doing? And we're, our clothes are no more expensive than the high street. What countries do you, do you produce? Okay, um, the, uh, um, probably the majority of our range comes from India and we use a f quite famous factory there that's powered by, it's got um, Vestas wind turbines actually. Mm -hmm. um, there's 32 Vestas wind turbines that are on a wholesale power purchase agreement to the factory. The factory is all like um, Fairway Foundation audited and that kind of means that everyone in the factory and the fields gets a fair work, fair, fair pay, work, clean working conditions. And the down the road is the cotton plantation, organic cotton plantation. And so uh, the fields are hand worked and then the, the cotton's put on a camel, it goes up to the factory, it's spun, turned into a jersey, embroidered, put in a container on a truck. And air, we don't air freight anything so we just ship it to like Felixstowe or London or whatever and then it's shipped down. Um, then we get a few other bits and bobs. You can't do everything with organic cotton jersey. So say if you want to make a jacket, you can't make it out of cotton. You have we make it out of like hemp or something. So it's a case of like picking. As the designer has quite a, a wide range of fabrics to pick from. It's sustainable fabrics nowadays like bamboo, hemp, organic cotton, even recycled PET and stuff. Um, but normally the geography tends to be dependent on the fabric. So you wouldn't be able to grow organic cotton on the Isle of Wight, you have to go to India, mm. but then it might be better to get bamboo from somewhere more in the northern latitude. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously the, the raw materials have to come from somewhere else because we don't grow them in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's not that long ago when Britain had a, a clothing industry. Yeah, yeah. Cotton, cotton mills and yeah. was made here. Um, yeah. Does that bother you that, that you can't make it in the UK? Uh, we do do a lot of manufacturing in the UK, um, on the Isle of Wight actually. So basically, when the uh, we we buy our products as uh, in in a like when we get an organic T-shirt. This is one of the things about the, the business efficiency leanness is that we do a load of organic T-shirts, but they're all still T-shirts. So we just buy in heaps of T-shirts, and instead of buying in like three hundred of this design, if this design doesn't go well, we we stock up stock up on T-shirts and then we print small numbers of designs. So we get the economies of scale, but also the flexibility. How important is it, do you think, for the islands to develop more green, greener industries, green com you know, companies like yourselves? Well, no, that, uh, what's, what I would say is that the Isle of Wight initiatives have got nothing to do with why our business exists. They're not in inspired or motivated or anything. If the island did the eco-island thing, it would probably change Britain. It really would. And the great thing about it is it's a closed economy, and so the opportunities are amazing. But it's like a lot of things, it's, you know, it's that, that, that point of commitment, I describe it, and that's one of the things that, there's a point of commitment where you decide, you know, to sort of go for it, take the risk, a massive risk, jump off a cliff. It's that point of commitment where we've decided, actually, yeah, we're going to do it, and we're, we're past the point of no return now. We could get fully bankrupt and dispatched. <laughs> but if the Isle of Wight had that... The guts in it. It's had, guts had, to do it. had strapped on a pair yeah. and did something. They could change the UK and change the world because the UK has got forty percent of the natural resources, renewable energy resources in the U EU. It's got engineering um, industry and expertise, like n resources like no other EU country, and it's just explosive potential. But somebody needs to stand up and and what we're hoping to do is that you know in our small way, if more and more little companies like us can stand up and demonstrate that. You know, this isn't this isn't something where we can sort of we could just sit around and do nothing, or we can just lead from the front. I don't think that we're going to be, you know, some kind of world-saving um, uh, company that is like the solution to the 21st century sustainability crisis. But if we can inspire people to um, make wider lifestyle choices in going green and to spark a change in the industry or inspire some sort of wider change in the industry, then I think we've done our job basically. Mm -hmm.